more from american soil as the nation begins a new chapter of space exploration stage one propulsion is nominal this is us as a nation this is us as a nasa private public partnership together allowing our nation to capitalize on what they've invested in within nasa to be able to create this industry both of our companies, Boeing and SpaceX, are incredibly capable companies. It's just an awesome feeling to see the hardware coming together and seeing, you know, the excitement of the, of the technicians, of the engineers. It's going to be wonderful to see the crowds come back. And this is great to get the public uh, kind of re-engaged on human spaceflight again. The Commercial Crew Program is revolutionary in a sense where it's going to provide us the opportunity to have more astronauts in space. It's going to further our ability for knowledge in a microgravity environment. We need to explore, we need to pioneer, we need to, to see what's out there and find new places to, to, to live. The International Space Station um, still has a lot to teach us. I think we're going to have a lot more opportunity to do the exploration research that we need to get us to the moon and to Mars and beyond. There's a larger group of us that are dreaming that potentially could have a ride someday and, and be working in space. It's a huge goal, a huge accomplishment for both the partners, NASA and, and the United States of America. The fact that we're able to partner with commercial industries allows us to fulfill that mission, to be explorers, because we can work together. This is just the beginning. I know the greatest events in space exploration have not happened yet, and that our destiny lies above us. Terrific, terrific. Well, welcome, welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center. Uh, it's great that you can be here with us today as we announce the astronauts who are gonna fly the first crewed missions launched from American soil since 2011. A great day. We have some uh, distinguished guests that I would like to announce. Uh, first of all, we'll start on the stage. First, NASA's administrator, Jim Bridenstine. Kennedy Space Center Director, Bob Cabana. <laughs> Boeing Defense Space and Security President and CEO, Leanne Curet. <laughs> SpaceX President and COO, Gwen Shotwell. <laughs> awesome. Terrific. And in the audience, uh, Senator Ted Cruz. <laughs> Representative Brian Babin. <laughs> Representative John Culberson. <laughs> Representative Pete Olson. Jay Guerrero, Southwest Texas District Director for the Office of Senator John Cornyn. <laughs> Booker Morris, Booker Morris, District Director of the Office of the Representative of Sheila Jackson Lee. <laughs> Jed Webb, District Director for the Office of Representative Randy Webb, Weber. <laughs> and Heather Washburn, representing Congressman Kevin Brady. Uh, Texas State Senator Sylvia Garcia. <laughs> Texas State Representative Dennis Paul. <laughs> and Galveston County Judge Mark Henry. <laughs> I also want to mention some key leaders that are here today from NASA. I'll start with the, the Director of Flight Operations here at JSC, Brian Kelly. <laughs> NASA's Commercial Crew Program Manager, Kathy Leaders. 
<laughs> and NASA's International Space Station Program Manager, Kirk Sharn. <laughs> That's great enthusiasm. What a great, uh, what a great group. I appreciate the fact that we have some really important leaders of the United States here with us today for this great moment. You know, in the service of our nation's space program, the Johnson Space Center has been the heart of human spaceflight for over 50 years, and these days are busier than ever. So at this moment, we have six humans living and working in space, about 200 miles above us, supported by an international team led by folks right here in Houston. We have engineers working on the spacecraft that will enable the United, States, the United States to send humans further into the solar system than we've ever done before. And NASA's on the verge of sending astronauts to low Earth orbit on two different American-made spacecraft. This is just the beginning of the daring missions that this country is embarking upon. Uh, through the commercial crew program, our astronauts and engineers have been working hand-in-hand -hand with Boeing and SpaceX companies to develop these first commercial crew vehicles capable of carrying humans in space, SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. Now we're ready to assign the crews for the first flights, but the launch is only the beginning. They'll be going to the International Space Station, and these spacecraft will allow us to expand the station crew and really uh, get stationed to its full capability. Space Station is where we are continue to set records on crew time for utilization and research, where we're increasing our knowledge of how to live and work in space, doing groundbreaking research to improve life on Earth, and fostering the new commercial market through the National Lab, commercial cargo, and now commercial crew programs. So the Space Station program is a great example of how NASA can unite with common goals with both international and commercial partners to allow the United States space program to accomplish incredible feats. So it's an exciting time for human spaceflight and an exciting time for our nation. Now I would like to introduce my friend, uh, KSC Center Director Bob Cabana, who also happens to be the first command, the, the commander of STS-88, which was the first crewed flight to the International Space Station. Bob Cabana. Thanks, Mark. Boy, it's great for me to uh, come back home to my roots here at the uh, Johnson Space Center, <laughs> where, uh, where the core of NASA's uh, human space operations expertise uh, resides for this announcement today, where we name the crews that are going to once again be flying uh, from the U.S. to the International Space Station. The NASA's uh, commercial crew program has been an outstanding partnership between Kennedy and uh, Johnson Space Centers, along with propulsion support from the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. Together, we're delivering on the critical task of providing a capability to fly our crews on a U.S.-built rocket and spacecraft from U.S. soil on Florida's space coast to the International Space Station so we no longer have to rely on our Russian partners to get our crews to space. NASA, Boeing, and SpaceX have pulled expertise from across the nation in the development of the CST-100 Starliner and Crew Dragon systems, spurring innovation and economic growth and expanding U.S. leadership in space. Kathy, leaders and her team have, have done an absolutely outstanding job implementing a new way of doing business to fly humans to space. You know, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. In all of human history, only three nations have flown humans to space, the United States, Russia, and China. Yet today in the United States, we have three U.S. companies building capsules to take humans to space. Uh, SpaceX and Boeing with the uh, Starliner and Crew Dragon uh, taking crews to the International Space Station and uh, the program that's here that Mark mentioned, uh, Lockheed Martin with the Orion spacecraft on the uh, SLS rocket that's going to take us back to the moon and on to Mars. <clears throat> This is truly an exciting time for uh, human spaceflight on our nation, and believe me, it's only going to get better as we charge off into the future. In the last seven years following the final flight of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, the Kennedy Space Center has made an amazing transformation, transitioning from a single government program-funded installation to a true multi-user spaceport of the future, where we've transitioned a number of unique facilities for use 
by the flourishing commercial space industry. Today we've got Boeing in a former orbiter processing facility building the uh, Starliner and uh, service module. It's now called the Commercial Crew and Cargo Processing Facility, or C-3PF. And just down the road, SpaceX has a 20-year use agreement to maintain and operate historic Launch Complex 39A. They've already had 14 successful flights off that pad, and in the not too distant future, they're gonna be flying the first test flight of the uh, Crew Dragon on the Falcon 9 from pad 39A. Can't wait to see that happen. Announcing the cruise today is an important milestone in our journey of exploration, and it's great to be back in the home of uh, America's astronaut corps to make this announcement. In fact, the only way I think it could be better is if I were one on, on one of those assigned crews. <laughs> uh, to all the newly assigned crews, my sincere congratulations. Thanks for your efforts as you narrow your focus to a specific spacecraft and apply your test pilot development skills on the specific vehicles that you're gonna be uh, flying in space. I sure wish I could be flying with you. Again, my congratulations and keep charging. It's now my pleasure to introduce our NASA Administrator, the Honorable Jim Bridenstine. Thank you, Bob and Mark, for those wonderful words. What an exciting and an amazing day. And before I get started, I just want to say, uh, we have a senator here, we have members of Congress here, we have staff of members of Congress here, and I want to be really clear about the health of America's space program. Because of the hard work of the folks that are here and so many others, and an administration that is absolutely committed to space exploration, the health of NASA and our space exploration program is as strong as it's ever been, and it's getting stronger every day. So thank you to the representatives and the senators who make that happen. We appreciate you. Now, I will tell you that um, space has transformed the American way of life. The way we navigate, the way we communicate, the way we produce food, the way we produce energy, the way we do disaster relief and national security, the way we predict weather, the way we understand the climate, and certainly even the way we do banking in the United States of America, it all depends on space. And all of these capabilities were blazed by a trail that was NASA. And I want to be clear about a small investment from the American taxpayer has paid dividends to the point now where space has transformed the lives of not only every American, but every person on the face of the planet in so many ways that people usually don't even recognize it. So our investment in American space exploration always pays back, I, won't, I don't even want to say dividends, we're talking about multiple folds uh, in terms of, of the human condition. So for that, we are grateful uh, for, for what NASA does and, wh and what happens right here at the Johnson Space Center and all around our country. Now here's what's exciting about today. For the first time since 2011, we are on the brink of launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. And now it's time to meet the brave Americans who will be flying on these spacecraft developed right here in the United States. Would Mark Geyer, Bob Cabana, Leanne Corrette, and Gwen Shotwell please join me up here. The crew members for Boeing's test flight will come first. First, a man born in Miami who grew up in Atlanta. He's a retired Air Force colonel who served as a test pilot and a fighter pilot. He was selected as an astronaut in 2000. He piloted the Space Shuttle Endeavor for the STS-126 mission and the Space Shuttle Discovery 
on its final flight, STS-133. Introducing NASA astronaut Eric Bowe. Good job. The next astronaut for Boeing's first test flight is a Philadelphia native, a retired Navy captain. He piloted Space Shuttle Atlantis for STS-115 and commanded Space Shuttle Endeavour on STS-126 and Atlantis on STS-135, the final flight of the Space Shuttle program. He has been an integral part of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner program, introducing Boeing astronaut Chris Ferguson. Also joining the crew of Boeing's first test flight is a California native who is a Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel and an F-18 test pilot who has flown more than 2,500 hours in more than 25 aircraft. This is her first space flight, introducing NASA astronaut Nicole Anapu Mann. Now let's meet the crew members for SpaceX's Demo-2 crew test flight. From St. Anne, Missouri, he is an Air, Force, uh, an Air Force Colonel and flight test engineer who was selected as an astronaut in 2000. He flew aboard Space Shuttle Endeavour twice, first on STS-123 and then on STS-130. Introducing NASA astronaut Bob Bankin. Also joining the SpaceX Demo 2 test, his hometown is Appalachian, New York. He is a Marine Corps colonel and test pilot. He was selected as an astronaut in 2000. He piloted Space Shuttle Endeavour for STS-127 and Atlantis for STS-135, the final Space Shuttle mission. Introducing NASA astronaut Doug Hurley. Following certification, Boeing and SpaceX will provide regular crew rotation services to the International Space Station. NASA astronauts who will fly on Boeing's first mission to the station are, number one, a man who grew up in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. He became a Navy commander and a test pilot. He has flown more than 3,500 hours in more than 40 aircraft. He was selected as an astronaut in 2013, so this will be his first space flight. Introducing NASA astronaut John Cassida.
The second crew member on this mission was born in Euclid, Ohio, but her hometown is Needham, Massachusetts. She is a retired Navy captain and a test pilot who was selected as an astronaut in 1998. She spent 322 days in space on two space station missions, expeditions 14 and 15 and expeditions 32-33. And she was commander of the International Space Station, introducing NASA astronaut Sonny Williams. <laughs> And finally, we're going to meet the, ast the NASA astronauts who will fly on SpaceX's first mission to the International Space Station. The first crew member is from Pomona, California. He is a Navy commander, a naval aviator, and a test pilot. He spent almost 3,000 hours flying in more than 40 different aircraft, made 400 carrier-arrested landings, and flew 24 combat missions. He was selected as an astronaut in 2013. This is his first space flight introducing NASA astronaut Victor Glover. The second crew member on this mission was born in Lebanon, Missouri, and grew up on a farm near Richland, Missouri. He is an Air Force colonel and a flight test engineer. He was selected as an astronaut in 2009. He spent 166 days on the International Space Station for expeditions 37 and 38, introducing NASA astronaut Mike Hopkins. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our commercial crew astronauts. Will somebody show some patriotism out there? <laughs> Boy, I'll bet you guys feel really good right about now. <laughs> that is an impressive and very warm welcome. So I've got a few questions. We're going to not just introduce the astronauts. We're going to get to know them a little bit, if that's OK. So the first question I have goes to Nicole Mann and Doug Hurley. Only seven astronauts in history have been the first to fly on a brand new US spacecraft. Nicole, you're the first flight, you're the first flight on the Boeing Starliner, and Doug, you're the first flight on the SpaceX Crew Dragon. How does it make you guys feel? And why don't you uh, share with us how it feels to be just part of this very small group of individuals who have done such amazing things? Nicole? Well, I have to tell you, sir, it's absolutely an opportunity of a lifetime. I couldn't be more excited to join the NASA Boeing team and to be involved in the tests and development and then to be there on launch day 
and to experience the results of all that hard work. It's gonna be a proud moment for the team. It's gonna be a proud moment for America. So I'm just grateful to be able to help usher in this new era of American space flight. And I don't know about you, Chunky, but I think as a test pilot, it doesn't get any better than this. No, it really doesn't. Uh, the first flight is something you dream about uh, as a test pilot, you know, and you don't think it's ever gonna happen to you, but looks like it might. And uh, <laughs> Oh, it better. <laughs> You know, Bob and I are uh, extremely excited to kind of put Dragon through its paces in space and uh, get to the International Space Station again. And by the way, this is as excited as Bob gets. So, <laughs> so this is, uh, it's gonna be fun. Bob, you're gonna get the microphone soon. Uh, Three of you were selected as astronauts in 2013 before NASA awarded the commercial crew contracts. In other words, you may have been expecting to fly on a Russian Soyuz rocket, and now instead you get to fly as an American astronaut on an American rocket from American soil. Yeah. <laughs> Josh and Victor, we'll start with Josh. Uh, tell me your feelings on, on this. What does it mean to you to actually, when you joined, you thought you might be flying on a different rocket, and now you get to fly on an American rocket. What does that mean to you? Well, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm sure that there is at least one Russian language instructor out there who, uh, who thinks that having me fly in a US vehicle is uh, not a terrible idea. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, uh, a few of us had a chance to, uh, to fly up to Alabama and meet uh, some of the uh, most talented, hardworking men and women at ULA who are building our rocket. And I'll tell you, um, we are in great hands. And uh, I gotta give a quick shout out to my, uh, my new buddy, Rudy, uh, from Elk Rapids, Michigan, who's building that rocket on that line. And uh, for me, this is what brings us all together. Um, you know, when Americans are, are working together and, and respecting and cherishing our individual differences, that's when Americans do the impossible. And I, uh, I am so honored uh, to be a part of that, uh, along with uh, all my colleagues here. And um, I'll tell you, being able to launch uh, to the International Space Station from U.S. soil, I can't imagine a better honor, and, uh, and we're ready. But earlier backstage, we were talking, you and I, and you mentioned that you had a, maybe an, an interest before being a, a, a pilot. What was that? Yeah, in my previous life, I did physics, and, uh, and I, I miss it, and it uh, looks like we'll get a chance to do a little bit up there uh, when, when Sonny and I arrive. So that, that explains the humbleness. He's a physicist before he was a Navy pilot, so. <laughs> All right, Victor, uh, Victor, you have the same opportunity. You're gonna be flying on American rocket. Share with us what that means to you. Well, sir, first and foremost, I'm just grateful to God and to my family and to our leadership for the opportunity to work for NASA, period. And to, to work and live in space is just a humbling and amazing blessing in and of itself. And now to have the opportunity to work with these great companies on something that is so important to our nation and to NASA, it, this is the stuff of dreams. Like Duke said earlier, this is a test pilot's dream. And I'm just excited, like Josh said, to get to work, making it a reality. Just so everybody knows, Duke is Nicole Mann. <laughs> that's, a, that's a call sign, so uh, I guess the Navy never left them, or the Marine Corps in Nicole's case. Good, excellent. For some of you, the last spacecraft you flew was the space shuttle, which was designed in the 1970s. Bob, can you tell us about the advancements in the technology and design of the SpaceX Crew Dragon? Well, First, I'd probably like to say that uh, you know, the space shuttle, actually, I think what we've really discovered, at least in, in my part over the last three or four years, kind of working commercial crew, is that vehicle was really capable, and it's super hard to try to duplicate it in just the short period of time that we've had. You know, it had decades to kind of mature to where it, where it was when we got our chances to fly it, those of us who did it towards the end of the shuttle program. And, and we're, it's, it's hard to kind of create a vehicle that accomplishes the mission that that vehicle did so, so wonderfully and so majestically. Uh, the thing I'm really looking forward to, though, is that uh, I think the way we described the space shuttle was that there are about 3,000 switches inside, and uh, uh, there was no situation that the astronauts couldn't make worse by uh, touching the wrong switch at the wrong time. And I know that uh, Doug is probably thinking this about me, and I'm thinking it about him, that uh, uh, 
We're, we're grateful that the next vehicle that we're going to fly on is going to be uh, a little bit more automated, have uh, quite a bit less switches, and uh, doesn't put us up to trying to double check each other to make sure we're not making something to just one switch throw worse. So I'm really looking forward to, to that. And, and, and it's just a big challenge trying to defeat the space shuttle with one of these new ships. It's like a glass cockpit. It's like flying an iPhone, right? It's, it is absolutely like uh, flying the iPhone. I think uh, I look forward, sir, to, to getting you down there at some point out in Hawthorne, and maybe you can sit next to us in the cockpits and, and go through flying the iPhone uh, to dock the space station. <laughs> So just to be clear, Bob, I've already done that, and I nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I probably did it better. I'll be putting in my application. Chris Ferguson, you've been very involved in the development of the Starliner. Share with us uh, kind of the differences and how you see it compared to the space shuttle. Well, uh, I think first and foremost, uh, with uh, 40 years difference in uh, avionics and technology development, we can squeeze a lot more into a, into a smaller ship. So I, you see a lot of that, a lot more capability um, in terms of uh, what the vehicles can do. Uh, but I think w what we really see now is uh, a much greater emphasis on safety. Uh, we're returning to a full capability ascent abort system to keep astronauts safe all the way through the profile. And that's something that the shuttle didn't have. So it's, it's great to see us back in here. You know, we actually have requirements to drive us to a, to a vehicle that, uh, that is guarantees astronaut mission success throughout the full six-month mission. Awesome. So since 2015, and I think this is important for everybody in this audience to understand, these astronauts don't just fly the vehicles. They're involved in the development of the vehicles. They work side by side with the companies as they're making very critical decisions for their safety and for the capabilities of the vehicles. So since 2015, four of you have been working side by side with these companies as they developed and tested their spacecraft. Now you're getting ready to actually fly them. Eric Bowe, tell me how it feels to finally get to this point where you're ready to strap it on and fly it. Uh, it's amazing to have the opportunity to, to, to get to this point and watching the uh, small incremental changes come together to make revolutionary change is just an amazing thing. And to me, space flight's about people. And so the, these the last few years, watching the people, watching the teams come together, and now we're getting close to space flight, and I'm looking forward to the journey. Awesome. Mike and Sonny, you have already flown space station expedition missions. What capabilities do these spacecraft bring to the space station? We'll start with uh, Mike Hopkins. Yeah, well, first I'd like to say um, I want to also thank my family for being here today. And I got to say I'm looking forward to being able to share the experience of ISS you with Ike. You just made the rest of us look really bad by thanking your family. <laughs> <laughs> Was not my intent. Um, you know, it's pretty amazing if you think about it. The, the space station has been crewed since November of 2000. And commercial transportation uh, to and from the space station is, is going to enable us to maximize the benefit of that orbiting laboratory. And, and then the spacecraft, in addition of not only taking the human resource, the, the astronauts, to the, uh, the space station, it's also going to enable us to, uh, to take the science experiments up and bring some of that critical research home. That's awesome. Sunny? Um, I'm just really excited that we're actually going to be able to take these spacecraft and show them off to our international partners, have them ride with us to the International Space Station. Um, then that's going to help all of us understand a little bit more about how we live and work in space and further on for our next program, uh, Orion and SLS. So there's a lot to be done, and we're just the beginning. Awesome. Thank you all for, uh, for doing the question and answer session. I guarantee you there's going to be no shortage of opportunities to interact with the press. We want them to do that. We're putting them to work. We encourage the press to, to, to utilize every bit of free time that they have uh, because this is, a, <laughs> this is a big deal for our country, and we want America to know that we're back, that we're flying American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. So having an opportunity to make this historic announcement and introduce you to these American heroes is, is unique. And in a moment, I'm going to present each of the companies responsible for helping, helping us accomplish this 
astonishing achievement with an American flag. And here's what we want. We want that American flag to fly on the first test flights, and we want those American flags to come home and be presented for posterity in the facilities of our commercial crew partners. So we're going to do that in just a minute. But first, um, I want to thank you for joining us, Leanne from Boeing. And I would like you to come up and maybe make a few comments about um, your involvement and, and how excited you are about this opportunity. Uh, this is so not about us today. This is about these amazing, talented individuals. Let's give them another round of applause. Y'all are just rock stars. Thank you for everyone, Administrator Breinstein, everyone who has been part of this journey for so many years. My personal congratulations uh, to this extraordinary set of men and women standing here whose talents, uh, perseverance, resilience are going to help shape us for generations to come. I'd also like to give a shout out to the Boeing uh, Starliner partners here. This is just such an incredible opportunity for me personally, as well as for our company. And I'm also excited to see the Starliner added to their impressive resumes to join their flights on F-15s, 18s, V-22s, you name it, you all have flown it, and we are just thrilled to be with you for the long run. I'd also like to give a shout out in addition to Nicole, Eric, Sunny, and Josh, to Chris Ferguson. Uh, we were blessed, so very blessed, to bring him into the Boeing family a few years back, and he's just been wonderful to partner with. All of us are here today because we stand for something new and profound, built upon an amazing legacy and it is personal for all of us in this room, together returning American astronauts on American rockets from U.S. soil and creating endless possibilities for generations to come. But my most heartfelt thanks goes to NASA. We are so proud of the many achievements we have celebrated over decades, from lunar footsteps to space shuttle launches to assembly of the International Space Station Today we start a new chapter, and we're so thrilled to be on this journey. Thank you so very much. Gwen, would you like to come and talk about SpaceX and your involvement, and of course, how excited you about uh, you are about this opportunity? First, I got to get this photo because I'm never going to get this again. <laughs> so, games aside. The 7,000 women and men of SpaceX understand what a sacred honor this was for us to be part of this program and for us to fly you. So thank you very much. We take it seriously. We won't let you down. So Elon founded this company 16 years ago with the laser focus on building the safest, most reliable ships to take humans from this precious planet. And I want to thank him for that. Thank you for giving all of us the opportunity to, to do this great mission. But I also have 7,000 employees who are making that vision and that dream real. And I want to thank each and every one of them for doing the great work that's necessary to carry these precious lives to space. So thank you. These folks give their heart and soul every day, sometimes seven days a week, um, to make this work and to do the right thing. And when you come into a SpaceX facility, whether it's an engineering site or a factory or launch test landing site, you feel that. You feel that passion. Hopefully you'll see that again today. At 11.27, we release the Cargo Dragon from the International Space Station, and she'll come home this afternoon at 3 o'clock. It's incredibly exciting. Absolutely exciting. Um, this November, 
we plan on, we target a launch of the first demonstration of the Crew Dragon. And I can tell you, predicting launch sites can make a liar out of every one of us. <laughs> I have been proven one. Um, but it's where we're headed. It's right upon us. We had our quarterly this week. And for the first time in years, it felt real. It's real. It's right here. But we didn't do this on our own. I'm thanking the SpaceXers who make this real. But there's hundreds, if not thousands, of NASA folks who have worked with us closely, actually since 2006, because the Crew Dragon leads to the Cargo Dragon. For all those folks that have worked incredibly hard and continue to work incredibly hard to get this vehicle and this system lifted off later this year, I wanted to thank you all for that. I also want to thank the members of Congress for here to be here. Without your support, we would not be here. You would not be flying on these amazing crafts. So thank you for your support. And thanks to the American public for your patience, your dedication to allowing us to finish this job. We're not let, going to let you down at Astra. All right. Well, I can't wait to have these astronauts flying our rockets to the International Space Station for the first time since 2011. What an amazing, amazing day, amazing opportunity. I hope all of you understand the excitement. It's not just the people in this audience, it's Americans all across this country that are ready to start flying in space again. And we're so grateful that you're willing to step up and accomplish the job. Final applause before I turn it over to Mark Geyer. You guys are going to come in the front. Yeah. They were just going to come in front and do one last thing. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We look forward to seeing you at the launch in Florida. So, so one more time, a uh, round of applause for the astronauts who will be flying on the Starliner and Crew Dragon.